Welcome to So Very Easy. My name is Laura, and pets are a big part of our family celebration. And therefore, they should have their own Christmas stocking. So let's make a Christmas stocking that looks like a big dog bone. Now we can make this any size you want, and you can determine that right at the beginning. The dog bone can be any size you want, but we're going to need to draw ourselves a template. So I have a piece of paper 13 inches by about 19 inches. And I want that stocking to be about that size. So to draw myself a template, I'm going to fold it in half once and fold it in half one more time. So I'm only going to be doing a quarter of the template and the rest will open up when I'm done. At the top, I need to do that round part of the bone. We can just take a pencil and draw it, or you can use a plate. I'm just going to use a pencil because dog bones aren't perfect to start off with. And I'm only going to do sort of the start of a heart. So, so I'm going to come up and around and then down. And I've done that on the folds so all of my open pieces are together. Now just cut that out. So I now have my dog bone shape. So this is going to be the size of that stocking. From here I'm going to need fabric from the outside. And I did get this really cute fabric from Northcott. I need some inside fabric, some quilt batting, and some embellishments. Take two pieces of fabric and make sure that they're a little bit bigger than this dog bone. Because the first thing we're going to do is do some quilted layers. So that's going to give the dog bone some stability so it's going to stand up nice and look nice. We will be trimming the bone shape down after. We just need to quilt some. So a little bit big will be fine. We will need to quilt these layers. If you're using a quilt batting that the machine can stitch over, you don't really need a lining because we are going to add a lining after. If you have a polyester with lots of fibers where the feet of the machine will get caught, you are going to have to put a lining on it. But in this case, I won't need a lining. So I'm going to put these layers together and I'm just going to quilt a cross hatched line. You can free motion it. You can do any design that you'd like. When those two pieces have been quilted, put them together, right sides touching, and trace out your bone shape. Those traced lines are going to be stitching lines. But before we do any stitching, we need to decide where the opening is going to be we do need to have an area where we're going to be able to put things in. So somewhere we need to decide on an opening. So I'm going to decide that I have this top area here that is going to stay open. And put that mark on the inside. Once those layers are together, we're going to start on one point, go all the way around, and stop on the next so that we will keep that open. And be sure to have your fabric going in the right direction. We can now cut out a seam allowance all the way around. It's a lot easier to cut after we've stitched than before. And even this area where we've left that opening, we do need to leave a quarter inch seam allowance. You can always add more than a quarter inch seam allowance if you'd prefer. We can clip some notches in these areas where it is a little bit round and that way it'll have a nice finish on the other side. Just little snips coming to that thread and do one coming right to that center. And This is the area where we stitched. And right where this area is where we have stopped and started just clip to that seam so we have that little opening. Once we have the snipping done, we can put this away and do the lining. Take two pieces of fabric, put them together right side, trace around the dog bone all the way around. 
The only difference between the stitching for the lining and the outside is we need to leave an opening in the side. So we're going to start stitching right here, go around and then stop, leave an opening, stitch all the way around, stopping right here at our stopping and starting point. So we're going to have an opening here and an opening here. We now can cut out the shape leaving a quarter inch seam allowance and we can always leave a larger than a quarter inch seam allowance where we have that side hole right there with that hole and we still have that opening up at the top. Do that little snipping around those edges and snip in that end and don't forget to snip right at the top of that seam. So we have that little opening right where we've stopped and started. We now get to put these two layers together. Turn the lining right side out and I will take time to press all of those seams flat. When we do press this, because we snipped right here, we have this little end that's sticking out. That's just going to make it easier to sew together. We can now take this lining and put it right inside so the right sides will be touching. And we're going to match up that top. We do have those notches that are going to match up on both sides. Before we do the stitching, we need to put in a hanging loop. And you can use any size ribbon you want. This particular one is 12 inches. I have folded it in half and I'm going to place it in between my two seams somewhere where I think I'm going to want that stocking hanging up. So I'm going to put that ribbon between the lining and the quilted piece. Pin it in place and now I'm going to be able to stitch all the way around using a quarter inch. Once we've stitched all the way around we can trim to this point so we're just going to make a little snip right to that V. Careful not to cut your threads. And I do like to put a little snip all the way around. It just really has a nice finish when you do this. We can now pull out that lining and then just pull that lining to the outside and match up all of your corners. Just put your hand in and you're going to be able to feel those corners and just match them up. And match up that top row of stitching. Once those seams are matching along that top, just press it a little bit. We will need to just close off that opening. We can hand stitch it or just stitch it with the machine. And I'd recommend one row of top stitching all the way around that top. And once that's been closed and the top stitching's done, we're going to be able to pull it right side out. I now have a Christmas stocking that looks like a dog bone. Now we get to decorate it. A few little bells, some decorations, and a bow will make this perfect for Christmas morning for our four-legged friends. I do hope you give it a try, and thank you for joining me today on So Very Easy. Feel free to subscribe and come on back. Let's see what we're working on next time in the sewing room. Bye for now.